Good afternoon. My name is Andrew Lee. This is Derek Chan as part of the organizing committee here in Hong Kong University. I'm not here. In Hong Kong, Wikimania. This is Emily. Hi. Kailana. Uh, Kailana on Wikipedia. Right. Just Kailana on Wikipedia. Um, I'm Yuzhu Faceto. And we thought we talked a little bit about some of the things that are interesting about the Hong Kong, or the presence of Wikipedia in Hong Kong. And basically two things. One is how actually Hong Kong had a really important role in the history of not just Wikipedia in Asia or anywhere, but globally. And we'll show you in a second why this is. And then we'll also talk about uh, you know, some interesting examples out of the experiments that we had here in Hong Kong. And then we'll look into some of the history of the Hong Kong chapter here and, and see what kind of activities they had that were seminal in bringing this conference here to Hong Kong this year. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about why Hong Kong is really important in the history of Wikipedia. I actually am American, but I taught here from 2003 to 2006 at Hong Kong University. And uh, one of the things that I first did when I got here in 2003 was talk to some really smart people that I respected and said, you know, what should I really, what should I look at in terms of collaboration on the internet? You know, remember this time was when blogging got started. There was no Facebook. There was no Twitter. There was no real collaboration going on in a meaningful way, other than people blog posting and maybe referring and RSS feeds. So one of my good friends, Jerry Mikulski, who used to be the editor of Release 1.0 for Esther Dyson, said, oh, you got to look at this site called Wikipedia. It's amazing. There are these people who go on and write this encyclopedia, and anyone can edit any page at any time. And then at the time, I said, you know, I've been a veteran user of the internet since the 80s. And I said, that sounds like complete lunacy. How could you allow anyone to edit any page without passwords, logins, or anything? Obviously, it's going to be pretty horrible content. And what happened, this was in March 2003. So I sat down at my desk after having lunch with them, and I started surfing through Wikipedia. And I went page after page after page, and I said, this is really pretty cool. Not only is it pretty cool, it's pretty good content. And Matthias Schindler, who some of you may know from the German chapter, reminded me of something just two days ago. He said, remember back then, this was just when Britannica in the United States started to put a firewall around its content. Britannica used to put its stuff out there and then it decided, well, we better lock things up and start making money. This was actually really important because that meant that there's a real need for Wikipedia as a free encyclopedia. So one of the things I tried during the summer course in July 2003 is to say, I was teaching in a room just like this with 80 undergraduate students as a summer course and I said, I'm teaching a 10-week course. I want them to learn about online interaction. Why don't I just put all 80 students on Wikipedia and let them interact and do what Wikipedians do? So actually, this was what I would consider the real first classroom exercise of Wikipedia. There are actually two other exercises if you look on the page, University Classes and Projects on Wikipedia, which was actually started you know, around the time when I started my class project because we started to see lots of universities and professors and teachers look at Wikipedia and say, this is an interesting test ground for our students. But if you look at the two other experiments that happened before my experiment, one, they said, well, there was one in Portland State University, much of the material collected was created offline and then the course wiki and elsewhere and then it was put into Wikipedia. So I don't really consider that an on Wikipedia project. And then another one said that they worked on an article but uh, it was really done by the lecture, and hopefully the students had done some editing at the same time. So although these are listed before my project, there's no real proof that these are real intense uh, projects on Wikipedia. On the other hand, if you look at my project, I put 80 students naked on Wikipedia, uh, virtually naked, not really <laughs> naked, um, and I said, you cannot interact in person, you cannot email each other, you must interact only on Wiki. Okay, so I randomly selected, you know, clumps of three to five students and said, you are going to edit the article on dim sum. You are going to edit the article on Monpop. You are going to edit the article on MTR. And you've got to do it all on Wiki. And not only do you have to interact with the other, you've got to interact with other Wikipedians around the world, but only on Wiki. Okay, so that's pretty unique at the time. So there were some pretty interesting, um, to say, some humorous outcomes from this thing. So these are the articles that we edited. Um, Emily here was really useful in identifying what had happened to these articles over 10 years. Because some of the early experiments were really quite laughable, and I'll have her show you some of these things. But two of these articles, at least, became featured articles over time. 
just to MTR, two are still featured articles, so MTR and others. So why don't you show us some of these things? Hi. Um, so the two articles that became feature articles in the years since were MTR and Flag of Hong Kong, both of which started as one sentence summaries. The flag of Hong Kong is red with a flower on it, and MTR is the transit system in Hong Kong. So that's pretty fantastic, and Derek actually had a hand in getting uh, the Flag of Hong Kong article to feature status. Um, okay, so this is the first edition of the Chinese Tea Culture article which is now a very respectable B-class article that correctly summarizes Chinese tea culture. But as you can see, it uh, began, it had some very dubious beginnings. My, my favorite sentence is uh, the section on saying thanks for tea, where uh, you bet your savings that they're secret agents, you are broke, they're just Chinese. So um, as we can see, we've seen a lot of improvement in these articles, but uh, they, they started as very, loose early Wikipedia culture articles and have slowly become incorporated into the uh, current establishment. Yes, that th this is the excellent part of our favorite part. And then uh, another favorite was the fifth revision of Apple Daily, which was by a Hong Kong university student. Uh, because it was <coughs> containing pictures of deaf people. Um, but it, it shows how far we've come in just 10 years. And now our coverage of Hong Kong is really quite fantastic, so. Yeah, I mean, some of the lessons that you see here is that although we, I mean, one of the problems I'm sure all of you run into is we kind of said to learn Wikipedia, just read these 15 policy pages. And that's a lot to absorb, right? Um, so NPOV, we introduced to them and said, you know, you got to learn to read from NPOV. Because this class was a journalism class, we thought that Wikipedia would be a good way to learn how to write neutrally about stuff. But you realize that most 18-year-olds out of high school really don't understand the concept of NPOV well. And especially since we got them to write about something they're either passionate about or they, were, they grew up going to and admired, they wound up writing almost like tourist brochure. Uh, prose about Victoria. It's the most beautiful place in all of Asia. Um, you really want to take a walk up there. Yeah, beaches. The beaches are pristine. <laughs> right. Yeah, the recommendations for eating and food and stuff like that. Right. Where to find goblins. So, you know, it's almost like wiki travel mixed with Wikipedia mixed with an advice column. And it was very hard to deconstruct all those things and pull it apart. But that was something I think was pretty success successful in the end. And then one thing I wanted to show you um, as a result of that was that if you look at some of these uh, edit histories, you'll see some of those interactions between the community and my students back then, which are kind of interesting because you start to see bad stubs and bad things added in or copyright violations galore on photos. They didn't realize, you know, you've got to learn a whole different thing. There was no comments back then, remember. Comments was a newer thing. So, Look at all these IDs here, that they did massive edits in a row, but then you start to see some established members of the community. So anything like this is probably a student. These folks didn't create user pages, so there's still there's students there. But then you saw some of these existing uh, editors here. Olivier here, you know, was really trying to be nice, but really delete, 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 and uh, modify the behavior of those students there. But it's really interesting to go back and look at those edit summaries and see what some of these things are. I think there's one gasp for help here somewhere. Um, please, someone rearrange the pictures. The convenience shop picture is erroneous, again. Um, so you can see this is one of the first ever experiments of putting like 80 or a mass number of student newbies on Wikipedia and having the crowd on Wikipedia interact with them. So pretty interesting. This would not work, you would be blocked pretty fast. right? So it was a much more welcoming yeah, community back in 2003. <coughs> So what's really interesting is <laughs> it was so welcoming, or so interesting back then, CNN did a story back in 2003, almost 10 years to the day mm -hmm. that we're having Wikimania. So here's the piece. I think we can show the video of audio. So unfortunately, you can't find this video piece on CNN anymore because when these new sites reorganize their sites, some media get dropped and you never see them again. So even contacting CNN, they say, oh, we have it on tape, but I'm not sure we have a tape player to digitize it. So this is one of the few copies of it that you'll find. Right? So let's see. 
tech launch segment to start the week. Ask, are you well versed in Russian history or familiar with the finer points of roller hockey? An expert on any topic can find a home in Wikipedia, a know-it-all website created by thousands of plugged-in volunteers. And our technology correspondent, Christine Stout, uh, joins us with more on the uh, on the wiki. And I tell you what's a wiki professional thinks she has. Thousands of wired eggheads are going wiki, writing and editing articles to create the ultimate encyclopedia. Stan, Sun, and Zerk. Not the usual image of Hong Kong, but Stanley Beach is the usual hot spot for these sun-loving locals. Like Abby Wong and Olivia Yuan, university students who took their love of the shoreline online at a website called Wikipedia. Wong posted a report on white dolphins, and Yuan, a primer to Hong Kong's beaches. And just minutes after the article hit the site, they were tweaked and polished by Wikipedia's cult-like following. I think they're wiki and these people who are the wiki people. Wiki comes from the Hawaiian term for quick, and like a weblog, it's a fast and easy way to publish online. But unlike a weblog, which typically publishes one voice, a wiki provides the voice of many. Rolling in brush with the wikis was part of a school assignment on new media. Professor Andrew Lee said then and 78 other students loose on the site. Well, I think what happened in the Wikipedia community is they started seeing all these entries about Hong Kong being updated and rapidly edited. And suddenly everyone who was used to maybe an edit every few minutes or every hour or so on Wikipedia started seeing a flurry of activity. Student Tony Young took a digital camera to this lookout point and published a wiki entry on Victoria Peak. After that, I found that uh, my careless mistake of my English is uh, correct. Jung doesn't mind being corrected by complete strangers, but the site's free-for-all editing may not sit well with other egos. It would seem like it's a recipe for disaster. It looks like it's one of the worst ideas anyone could have ever thought of. But it really does follow the open source model, which is that more eyeballs make all bugs shallow, meaning that the more people who see it, the more obvious you'll be able to get those bugs or the inaccuracies out of it. Over time, rookies say a group view or consensus emerges. A single take of the world seen through. Take classes. <laughs> a global tribe more likely to surf the web than the waves of Stanley Beach. Now, Wikipedia has welcomed the students with a special page to track their progress. And in the wiki world, the more, the merrier. In the last two years alone, the site has racked up over 132,000 articles. What else is in the wiki world other than the Wikipedia? <laughs> in the wiki world, there is also other examples of collaborative software being used to create Wiktionary, which is a wiki version of a dictionary, an open content dictionary created by a global community of many dictionary geeks out there. There's also a wiki token, which is a wiki dedicated to J.R. Tolkien and Lord of the Rings. Uh, there's also talk about wikis being introduced to the corporate world. For example, a wiki set up in a corporate intranet, so your production calendars, schedules, contests, etc., could be um, could be updated not by just webmaster but by everyone in the group. So this is all about, I think, as one of your interviewees mentioned there, about the open source concept. There, as we have open source software and Linux, and this is open source content in, in the wiki. Um, it's about what the doctor does in the web and making sure that a few bear moths don't stay there and everything. That's right. It really is a recapture the spirit of the internet, which is democratization. Um, for example, Linux is a great example. It's an open source software. Um, Linux is proven to be a formidable challenger to Microsoft and its Windows software. It's free, it's proprietary, it's created by a global community of programmers, but it's a concept that many ordinary or non-programming people like ourselves don't really understand. Wikipedia, though, is a way that we can explain the open source movement in a way that all of us understand. A dictionary and encyclopedia created by many, and as a result, is free, not proprietary, and may be more authoritative than, let's say, Webster's one day. We'll see. Alright, so how many of you are impressed that a news anchor said Linux and open source on air? So uh, that was pretty unusual. So Matt, did you notice that the logo for Wikipedia had not even been created? It was not the puzzle sphere, it was actually just a warped lens on top of text back then. And 132,000 articles was what it had back then. Which is pretty impressive even back then, but that was the early piece. So. Um, what happened was, this was really the first major news coverage of Wikipedia on the international stage, like a television show. So actually someone posted it out there, and then this was, I only found this out like last week, 
But Brian Bibber was the snarky one who said, oh, you know, only a few edits an hour, they're off by a factor of 60, not bad for CNN, right? So this is on the mailing, the Wikipedia L mailing list back in 2003. And then I said, um, where was I said? God love video editing, I was talking about Hong Kong entries at the time, but of course it came off like Wikipedia, I cringed. But then what's funny is this is the email from Jimmy Wales to the mailing list. If you can imagine this, back in 2003, he said, um, let me share a personal angle. I'm sorry to say that before I watched the video, I'd never heard of you, blah, blah, blah. Um, so imagine my shock and pleasure, I'm down in the lower part. Imagine my shock and pleasure to click on a link and see a video on CNN. CNN! Because Wikipedia had never gotten like CNN coverage before, or any major news outlet coverage back in 2003. With a bunch of people I'd never heard of or even imagined all talking about Wikipedia, wow. Um, the internet thing is pretty cool. I think it might actually catch on, Jimbo. So that was 2003. All right, so, so Hong Kong had a real interesting role in the early days of Wikipedia you know, evangelism because of this piece here. Then now, uh, oops, if you go here, this is me two days ago with Christy Lou Staff, the exact same correspondent 10 years later. And we're talking about, uh, what are we talking about? Gender gap. We talked about uh, flow features in Wikipedia and video and multimedia. It's pretty amazing to think about that. Ten years we've come this far. 4.2 million articles in English and 28 million altogether. Right? So I thought, because we started so strong in Hong Kong with this, and we're having Wikimedia now, Derek could talk about some of the really amazing things they've done here, uh, including meetups, hosting these major conferences for the Asia Wikipedia and Wikimedia uh, community here, and some of the interesting controversies that have been uh, you know, born out of Wikipedia contributions here and the, uh, the photos that have been generated by members here. So, Derek, can you walk us through some of that history? So, um, in 2003, Andrew did his course, and in 2004, as far as I'm aware of, nothing happened in Hong Kong with um, <laughs> Wikipedia, except that quite a few of the, of the organizers of Wikimedia discovered Wikipedia in 2004, including myself and Jeremy, who's a lead organizer. In 2005, we had our first ever Wikipedia meetup. In 2006, the Chinese Wikimedia community decided to come to Hong Kong, probably because we are um, a free city and um, we've got good university infrastructure to provide a conference. So all over the, the Chinese-speaking world, people came to Hong Kong. Also. Um, Jimmy Wales also came to himself and um, he is here in the picture um, and talked about this whole Wikipedia thing and how to bring it forward. We, we thought that was quite a nice idea. Um, there were about 200 people and remember that was before 2007 when everyone knew about Wikipedia. So even back then we thought we might organize Wikimedia at some point. 2007, a year later we thought we need some legal representation. So, Chapters have been spread up around the world, so we established Wikimedia Hong Kong. And also, unfortunately, one of the most prolific Hong Kong editors was banned in that year. I feel quite sad for that. Yeah. He shares my point of view most of the time, but too extremist. Well, he was mostly banned for using some purpose, so that's the other thing. Yeah, oh, including me, I was accused of being a soft puppet. So, um, after the chapter was founded, um, the year after that was basically a business as usual, getting used to the chapter being in existence. So um, a few meetups, I think it's every quarter, and an annual conference held in the summer. In 2009, um, the Chinese Wikimedia Conference comes back, and this year we moved to Macau, which is just a ferry ride from Hong Kong. Um, and we also helped with um, the Macau chapter's establishment. In 2010, um, so publicity came back. Um, a major publisher in Hong Kong, um, well, unfortunately plagiarized Wikipedia without even saying it was taken from Wikipedia. So there was a huge amount of publicity surrounding this. Um, I, was, I, I want to talk about these two pictures. That one, the caption from um, Wikipedia signpost says, no and free alternative available. I thought that was quite a nice comment. Um, there's an old picture which a Hong Kong contributor um, uploaded to Wikipedia um, to add to an article on a demolished pier. And um, that book plagiarized it without giving attribution. So we're doing a good job. And 
I also took that aerial picture um, into the screenshot because um, CX257, um, also known as Sam in real life, um, is one of the organizers of the Kamenia um, this week. So um, look for him. He, is, he took this aerial picture while he was just flying out of Hong Kong um, for, his own, um, for his own travel. So that was quite fun. What was the resolution? Oh, the resolution was fairly high, like a normal, a normal um, digital camera resolution. Oh, right. Um, the resolution of, of, of this other thing. Um, the publishers sort of work that um, we realized um, fairly soon after we got some, after, just before we got publicity. Um, so they called the bookshops and recalled all the books that were on sale. Um, some of us managed to buy a few copies of those before they were recalled. So um, um, look for us. Um, most of us are now organizers of this Wikimedia. <laughs> Um, and um, I think there was a small settlement fee um, similar, of a similar price to, to um, stock photo um, creators um, to settle the, the problems of having used their images in a previous book already and, and they republished the same book with a slightly different formatting and attribution on, on a back page later. So we taught them how to do CC. 2011, um, this is our probably the biggest grant we've received from Wikimedia Foundation um, between our um, establishment and Wikimania. There's a liberal studies toolkit. Um, around 2010, there was a major overhaul of Hong Kong's um, educational system in the, um, in the secondary level. Um, liberal studies or general studies or liberal arts, whatever you call it, was introduced as a compulsory subject for all students in Hong Kong. So. One of the main um, criteria is that um, they need to be able to criticize information. So since people have a tendency of copying Wikipedia without attribution or criticism, we thought we'd teach them how to criticize stuff properly and attribute things by using Wikipedia. So this, um, this toolkit is a one-page, um, two-sided, eight-four sheet, which um, we give to high school students. And we tell them how to scrutinize a Wikipedia article, how to find the sources that they reference, and how to um, and how to edit Wikipedia if you see it's wrong, um, and, and how all that links to the new um, Hong Kong high school syllabus. So in 2012, um, since um, Andrew, nothing much happened in the education sphere in Hong mm -hmm. Kong for at least at the university level, um, and. Last year, we are very grateful to have uh, Professor Lin at City University, who um, very kindly offered to do Wikipedia editing as one of the course assignments. So um, I think that's our, probably our biggest achievement as of last year, for also getting, a, getting Wiki, Wikimania under our belt. And this year, we now have Wikimania. Um, so that's here we are, and I want to give you a little bit of uh, well, suggestions for roadmaps on what we would do in the future. Um, so, let me just share a few things that didn't work. First of all, um, we have problems with recruitment and retention of editors and volunteers above the age of 25. This is mainly because Hong Kong has ridiculous working hours. Well, all jobs are nominally 9 to 5, but in reality, everyone works 8 in the morning to 9 in the evening and are on calls 24 7. So, Above the age of 25, we have serious trouble in keeping people editing Wikipedia. We see a very big trend of people getting interested when they were um, middle school and high school kids. Um, they edit Wikipedia for a few years, get really prolific at university level, organize a Wikimania, and then drop out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we need to find ways of um, making this more sensible. Um, one of the things I want to do is actually um, to get um, full-time staff to do all the boring administrative paperwork for a chapter so that the, the, the volunteers can actually do the interesting things. Now, um, let me talk about the other problems first. Um, we have a low interconversion rate between um, highly active pseudonymous editors and regular meetup attendees and, and chapter volunteers until last year. So, so we have sort of two separate groups of people, ones who are young, sort of 15-year-old, they edit online, and others who are like 20 to 22 year olds um, 
they are very keen on helping the chapter out. They have some experience in charity management and, and they join the chapter. So we have been seeing low to conversion rates until it can happen, thank the Lord. Um, and the third thing that didn't work is glam. If you are a curator from a Hong Kong museum, please talk to us now, we want you. Um, and, and the fourth thing is um, money. So we've been asking for money from the Wikimedia Foundation so that we can hire some staff and, and rent an office to do all the boring work for the Wikimedia chapter in Hong Kong for a few years. We've uh, been asking this every year using whatever process that was avant-garde at the time since 2010. Now, every year, this, the answer we received was a no. And th this year, we thought we had Wikimedia. We probably had a legacy to capture. So we should get some money this year, right? No, FGD said, you aren't going to get any money. They think putting money in Hong Kong is not going to create any good impact. So if you guys see all of this good stuff that we have just talked about, and then go see the FGD staff, tell them they are completely wrong. But to Wikimedia L would have read my um, angry email as of about four months ago and um, now I'm here in no official capacity except as an organizer of this Wikimania. So um, it's kind of in my interest to squander all the money we didn't get from the foundation and, and treat you all. <laughs> and but funny on a serious point, the legacy of this Wikimania because we have no money and nobody to run the projects we need your suggestions, and if you're a local in particular, we want your help to join us. So the legacy of Wikimania will decide what's next for the, the, um, the development of Wikipedia outreach in Hong Kong, and we want you to be part of it. Thank you. Any questions from anyone, either about Hong Kong or anything else? side to the story of the funding issue. And shame on you for not presenting. It's not true that the foundation said no, period. The foundation said why. And it is not true that the FTC did not give you money, period. The FTC also said why. Wikimedia Hong Kong has not managed its existing grant, the grant that funded the educational has not managed that according to regulations. So I don't think we need to bring this up now, but since you did, I think it's very unfair to present things the way you did. If anyone is interested in learning the details, they're all in public on Meta, you can read out. There is a disagreement between the Foundation and Wikimedia Hong Kong on what the development path is for Hong Kong. The Foundation is interested in investing in Hong Kong just as we agree with Wikimedia Hong Kong on how. We are in fact about to have a conversation with the current leadership of Wikimedia Hong Kong about how. So we are trying to fix this. I just wanted to set the record. Thanks for clarifying that. I mean, it's a very complex situation and only folks who really have the fortitude to wade through lots of emails and discussions and attend a lot of these chapters meetings would Un could unpack all that stuff. I track this fairly closely and I find it really hard to unpack. So thanks for clearing that up and stuff because I think, I think you're right. It certainly is not a you know good guy, bad guy. There are just different ways as the organization has professionalized over the years on how to handle money, priorities, management, and things like that. So I think that's a valid, valid comment. And you're all in good What's that? We're all in good faith. Yeah, well that's the funny thing is that we're all, we're all rowing in the same direction. We just may not always be in the same seats, right? So, good. Any other questions or comments, folks? Yes? Aside from previously, there was a lot of balls between Chinese in Hong Kong and the Soviet Union. Did you say lawsuit? Yes, lawsuit. So, do you think in the future that for Chinese, I mean, the press community or the responsibility of our articles on Wikipedia or the public?
regarding content on Wikipedia. Yeah. And you're talking about just Hong Kong local or just in general about? Oh, that's so cool. Well, the standard response is Wikipedia is a US nonprofit with servers in the US. So you deal with the US laws in that sense. That makes things a lot easier because having UK style libel laws here is kind of tough for Wikipedia, but being hosted in the US server is, makes it all different. Eric, you might have a different um, So since about two years ago, we're very grateful that um, the Wikimedia Foundation is um, putting more staff hours, especially the legal counsel part, um, to defend lawsuits in other countries pertaining to um, contents of all Wikimedia projects. I don't think it's necessarily true that we should avoid lawsuits because there are some people who like suing and um, I don't want to name anyone in case I get sued, in case we get sued. Um, but I think it's the foundation has taken a good direction in taking the stance to defend these lawsuits so that they won't be the, the unenforceable lawsuits in other countries such as Hong Kong won't be able to be used as precedents against other media companies who are operating in those localities and I'm very grateful for that. So I don't think avoiding is the right way to go forward. I think we really should be clarifying the legal responsibility and where that lies defended. Any other questions? I mean, just to add on that 30 seconds, uh, you know, very early on, back in 2003, when we started putting a lot of these articles up in Wikipedia, we had uh, a lawyer in Hong Kong you know, kind of push back on what the students are doing, saying, oh, you know, there's crown, you know, there's, there's all these crown copyright issues, uh, you know, you have to deal about uh, fair dealing and everything, but, you know, talking to the legal folks of the Wikimedia Foundation, you know, clarified a lot of those things, not just for me, but for the students and folks working on it, so that uh, we're really talking about American laws and not having to deal with all the things that come with Hong Kong and UK laws here. All right, thanks a lot. I think we have one o'clock lunch, so uh, feel free to track any of us down if you have any questions. Thanks.